Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, and today we are going to be releasing a powerful revelation concerning your marriage. And we want to believe God with you. We're going to be looking at a story found in the book of Genesis, especially chapter 29, in which Jacob was married to Rachel and Leah. And the marriage between Jacob and Leah, it had started out rough. It was not destined in the natural for success. But I want to show you from the Word of God how that God turned that around. God wants to turn your marriage around. And I believe over the next few minutes and the next few programs, you're going to get some information of how to walk into a miracle in your marriage. Maybe you're not even married and you're believing God for a spouse. You're going to get information that I believe is going to help you pick the right spouse, be able to have information that God can use in your life to turn your marriage around or to give you the marriage that you're believing God for. So you want to make sure that you're watching, get a pencil and piece of paper, and it's going to be a powerful revelation in your life. So don't go away. Kingdom Now. We'll be right back. Apparently there is there's one way that is Carrie's way. I really. expected to be more patient. I expected to be able to connect with her all the time. To be active. To have the right answer all the time. Of course there were things that I wanted. And I expected to be able to make her laugh all the time. It would be great if my husband loved to, you know, play soccer and go camping with me. I enjoy a clean house. And work out with me. I like things organized. Sex almost every week. Um, I mean, it's being with your best friend all the time. That's not always true. Also, that it would be fun. And to... Get an RV and travel the U.S. I I thought it would be a lot of work, which it is. Because we married forever, but um, awesome. <laughs> yeah. I always thought of myself as being a very confident, independent person. I didn't realize how vulnerable marriage would make me. If I do something and I try and it, it doesn't work out well and she's disappointed or annoyed, like that just, that kills me little things would come up and I have to check myself and say why am I f feeling this way or why do I think he's in the wrong or he's not doing this right really it wasn't any actual issue it was just my own selfishness it all requires work all the time we don't ever have something um, an area of our marriage where we just we put the work in we got it figured out and we're finished it's something that we need to really keep working on and keep thinking about and always making sure that our hearts are in the right place because as soon as we stop putting that kind of a work into it it's just it's gonna fall apart you're gonna have to to come into alignment with God's attitude and God's prescription for your marriage and the first thing you're gonna have to, to know is that God hates divorce God hates divorce. In the book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, and if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to that scripture. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, it says, For the Lord God of Israel says, He hates divorce. Now that's pretty strong language. For God, who is a God of love, to look at an activity, many of us know of activities that God says, I hate. Sins that we know that God says, I hate that and I hate this. You and I need to know that the Bible says God hates divorce. Now, many of you are in marriages and, and, and you need divine help. You want God to come in and help your marriage. You're praying that God will come in and do something powerful. I like to say that, that marriages made in heaven need divine help. A marriage made in heaven needs divine help. You may feel like that when you got married, it was the absolute perfect situation. And if that's true, even you know what I'm talking about. 
that marriage can be difficult. Marriage can have issues of rough spots, but maybe you're not in where you feel like it was a divine help or div uh, a match made in heaven. Some of you feel like that you were in a match made in hell. Jacob and Leah probably thought, my goodness, Jacob, after he married Leah, said, I didn't even want you. I thought your sister was prettier than you are. Well, how do you think that would go over in a marriage? Not very well. But somehow, some way, God moved in that marriage. And one of the things is, is that Jacob did not put Leah away. He could have divorced Leah. He could have gotten that marriage annulled. He could have left her. He could have said, no, I'm not going to be with you. I'm going to return you to your uh, father. But he didn't. In fact, as he is going to leave Laban's uh, uh, camp and, and he's going to take both uh, Leah and Rachel, when you look at that discussion but that Jacob has with Leah and Rachel as they're about to leave Laban, their father, you begin to see the love that Jacob had for both of his wives. You see that while this marriage between Jacob and Leah had started out in a horrible situation, God moved and I believe God honored Jacob because he got on the same page as God concerning this anchor point or this hatred of divorce. And what I want to say very simply is this that before you and I can expect to have the God of heaven, the God of covenant to come into our marriage, we're going to have to develop the same opinion about divorce and about marriage that he has. What is God's opinion on divorce? It says it right there in Malachi 2.16. God says, I hate divorce. And friends, I want to tell you, that you are going to have to develop a hatred for divorce. There's going to have to be something on the inside of you that you hate it, that it's not an acceptable option, that it's not a get-out-of-jail-free card. You're going to have to develop a mindset at the very onset that you are not going to accept divorce as being something that, that you go to, that you run to, that if it gets hard enough, that if it gets bad enough, that you're going to go to divorce, you're going to have to look at that marriage and say, you know what? God hates divorce, and then you're going to have to make this step. And so do I. Now, I recognize that I'm talking to people. Some of you, you're in marriages that if you were to tell us a story, we can understand how hard it is. And, and, and the Bible does give some instances of how to get where divorce is an option. And so I want to look at those things before we continue on this set in the anchor point. And, but before I do, I want to say this, is that this anchor point, though, does need to be set. We need to, to look at it and say, I hate divorce. I don't want it. Uh, many people who have had divorce in their family, they've had divorce with their parents or their grandparents. And a lot of times, here's what I'm seeing, is that when they have friends that have been divorced and they go and talk to their divorced friends, what takes place is they begin to look and say, well, my friend got divorced and their life, you know, seems to be going on and it seems to, to have uh, some joy in it. And so we get accustomed to it. We train ourselves with divorce. I might talk about dating for just a moment. I want to, to, you to understand that today's modern system of, and practice of dating, you know, you'll meet somebody and you will exchange love with that person and exchange uh, great secrets of your heart and you give them a part of your life and you'll do that with no commitment, really. And then all of a sudden, you know, you maybe stop seeing eye to eye. You stop looking at things the same way. Well, then you, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to stop dating you. You're going to not be my girlfriend anymore. You're going to not be my boyfriend anymore. And we start that at such a young age. What are we doing? I'm going to tell you what you're doing. You're practicing divorce. You're practicing marriage and divorce. You see some of these kids, teenagers, even 
12 years old and younger, some of them. And they develop what we call puppy love. They develop relationship. But friends, some of these relationships get so intense, it begins to mimic divorce. I mean, they, they get mad at each other for talking to somebody of the opposite sex. They want to know where the other person is. We're talking 12 and 13 and 14 years old. And they begin to go through and act like they're married only to find that days down the road, weeks down the road, months down the road, they begin to break that, per that off, and now they're going to find someone else. Well, what has happened? They have developed a culture and a mindset that it's okay to walk in love and to walk in this with somebody and then to break it off. And we train ourselves with this mindset of divorce and friends. There needs to be something on the inside of us that we hate divorce as much as we would hate any other sin, any other despicable thing in the Bible. And I want you to look at the, the terminology that, or the name that God, when he addresses himself here, he says the Lord God. And in my Bible, the word Lord is in all caps, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Lord God. Now, what name is this? This is the name of the covenant-keeping God. God is a covenant God. And if you want God's help, if you want the help of Jehovah in your marriage, you're going to have to realize that He is a God of covenant. And until you and I develop covenant mindset, until you and I develop a heart that says, I love covenant. I don't break covenant. I don't take covenant lightly. I am in this. Maybe I didn't even want to be in this, but now that I'm in it now, I'm going to honor covenant. And until you and I honor covenant the same way God does, we are not going to receive God's help. You see, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about if you want to tap into God's power in your marriage. If you want to tap into God's anointing, God's spirit, God's help for your marriage, you're going to have to develop the same mindset that I have an anchor point. I'm in agreement with God. Now, how ridiculous is it for people to want God to help them and we will pray for our marriage, yet we don't despise divorce. If you have divorce as an option and you've got divorce on your mind and you've got some line, some figurative line drawn in the dust that I'm going to divorce my spouse and divorce as an option and I'm going to leave you and I'm going to, to if, if you don't straighten up, I'm out of here. And you've got that as a mindset. I'm going to tell you, you are separating yourself from God's help. That's why you've not received help. Because you're out of alignment with God. You're out of alignment with what God wants to do in your life. What I'm talking about is you're going to have to come into alignment with Him to receive His power. You want God to move in your marriage? You want God to help you? You're going to have to begin to say over your marriage, I hate divorce. Why? Because God hates divorce. And that mindset and that attitude has got to permeate in your heart before, listen, before you are going to receive his help. You're going to have to have this mindset. Now, the New Testament does give us some, um, I'm going to say, allowances for divorce. Number one, in the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 3 through 9, I will read them with you. It says, And the Pharisees came to him, and they were testing Jesus. They were testing Jesus on this, this uh, idea of divorce and marriage. And they said to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? And he said and answered to them, Have you not read that he who, who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Verse 5, And said, For this reason a man shall leave father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Verse 6, so then they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate.
You're watching Kingdom Now. The message in which you're listening to today is called Lion Ugly, the Miracle Marriage. And I want to give this message to you free of charge. Email us at info at evangelnorth.net. That's I-N-F-O at evangelnorth.net. Give us your name and address and we will rush a copy of this message to you that could be a blessing to you or maybe you know someone whose marriage is in trouble and they need help. I believe that information found within this message can turn that marriage around. You can also call us at 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, and leave your name and information and we will give this to you. But also, for a gift of any size, if you believe in the message of Kingdom Now and can help us, we want to also, in addition to giving you the message, The Miracle Marriage, we want to also give you a book called uh, Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. It's written by Dr. Bob Rogers. And if you will give us that information, your information at the email address or by phone, we're going to give this to you for a gift of any size, as a way of saying thank you for supporting Kingdom Now. Now, Kingdom Now can be seen here at 21.3, The Light, or you can go online at WBNA21.com, click The Light, and then scroll down the ministries. You'll see Kingdom Now with Evangel North Church, and you can share this with people, and I encourage you to do it. Let people know about the program. Let people know on your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever social media that you have in your life, because if it's been a blessing to you, let it be a blessing to somebody else. So help us share the word, Kingdom Now, present it to your family and friends, and we want to thank you for watching. They didn't like that answer. So in verse 7, they said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce to put her away? Now I want you to notice what Jesus is going to say next. Because this is the attitude that people have who believe that divorce is an option for any reasons. He said to them, verse 8, Moses... Because of the hardness of your heart permitted you to divorce your wives, but it was not so from the beginning. Now, I want you to, to look at this because what I'm talking to you about today is how to receive a miracle in your marriage. How to have a miracle marriage. How to have a marriage that can start out ugly, that can be ugly in the middle, but God turn it around to be beautiful how do we, we have to develop this mindset and look at what he says here. Moses permitted divorce because of what? Hardness of heart. People who believe divorce is an option has a hard heart. If you, do you expect to receive the power of God with a hard heart? Do you expect your faith to work with a hard heart? Hebrews chapter 6 says that when you and I develop hardness of heart, that that is an evil heart of unbelief. Hardness of heart is considered, according to Hebrews chapter 6, an evil heart. Therefore, you cannot receive help from the Lord. Now, do you want to be considered to have an evil heart? Divorce was given to those people to whom God says, you have a hard heart. I'm not saying this. God is saying this. Jesus said Moses only gave that as an a option to people who were hard-hearted. Now, do you believe that a hard-hearted person can receive any help from the Lord? Do you believe that God is going to help you save your marriage when you have a hard heart, friends? It's not going to happen. No. He goes on to say, verse 9, I say to you that whoever, this is what Jesus is saying. Jesus said, I say to you that whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits 
adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. And his disciples, and I want you to notice what their reaction was to what Jesus had just said. Their reaction, verse 10, you got to love these guys, these disciples Jesus had. They said, if it's the case that a man um, with a man and his wife, their reaction, it's better not to marry. This so affected them, what Jesus said. They said, Jesus, if this is true, what you're saying is that a man should not divorce his wife unless there's been adultery involved. Their reaction was, it's better not to marry. I know people who say, and they come into agreement with the disciples, that they believe, you know what, if, if God looks at it that way, if God really has this type of attitude, they looked at Jesus and said, Jesus, if this is true, that I can only get divorced because of um, adultery, then it's better for me not to marry. What you see there is that the attitude of Jesus was conveyed. They understood what he meant. They understood that divorce for any reason, divorce was it, with any reason is not consistent with New Testament theology. It's not consistent with it. Now, Paul is going to give us another insight into this. And I want you to see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, He's going to talk about this, er this, uh, this topic of marriage and divorce. In verse 10, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 10, he says, Now to the married, he's talking to the married, I command. Now this is important when you're looking at Paul's writings. He says, Yet not I, but the Lord. Now, Apostle Paul is going to begin to talk about a command. And he's going to clarify this for us so we don't get this confused. He's going to say, I'm not commanding this, but God is commanding that a woman, or I'm sorry, a wife, not depart from her husband. Verse 11. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried and be or be reconciled back to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest I, I, not the Lord, say, that if any brother has a wife who does not believe, and she is willing to leave him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, and if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but now they are holy. Verse 15, but if the unbeliever departs. Now listen to this. This is who the, the departing that he's talking about earlier, the unbeliever. But if the unbeliever de depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but as God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? So what is he saying there? Oh, that was a powerful revelation that I know that God is using in your life. And I'm just praying that it's been a blessing to you. And I know that it can be a blessing to many people. And I want to make something available to you. This message is entitled, Lion Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, in which Jacob and Leah had a marriage that was destined to fail, doomed to destruction, but yet somehow, someway, God turned it around. There's principles found within this message. Lion Ugly, The Miracle mar Marriage, that God was able to, to give to you and I to turn our marriage around or maybe to give us information on who we're to choose if we're single. So I want to give this to you free of charge. I'm asking you if you would to email us info, that's info at evangelnorth.net info at evangelnorth.net or you can call us 502-413-0115 
502-413-0115. Dial extension 2 and we will have someone to answer that phone or you can leave a message and what we will need is your name and address and we will be able to send this message to you lying ugly it can help you it can help your marriage or maybe you want to sow it into somebody else's life that can help them and so if you will contact us we will rush you this message and it'll be a great blessing now for those of you who can help us for a gift of any size I want to in addition to that I want to give you a book by Dr. Bob Rogers called Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. This book has been influential in helping people. It will be a great guide to go right along with the message, Lying Ugly. This book that Pastor Bob wrote uh, is going to give you keys that's going to be able to help your marriage. And for a gift of any size, we're going to give this, we're going to send this to you. You can cut, use the same information. Email us at info, that's info at evangelnorth.net, or call us, 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, leave us your name and address, and we will get these to you, and we want to thank you for supporting. Of course, you can also go online to give and give the same information. If you'll go to evangelnorth.net, evangelnorth.net, and click the online giving button, and if you will put in the notes... Uh, lying uh, Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, Lying Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, put in there that you watch the Kingdom Now show. We will know that you're giving for this, and we will give this to you, and it'll be a great blessing to your life. I also want to encourage you to come out uh, to Evangel North Church, located in Clarksville, Indiana. Our address is 1732 Thames Drive. 1732 Thames Drive there in Clarksville. It's right off of the Veterans Parkway and Green Tree Boulevard. You'll recognize the Bass Pro Shop there in Clarksville. Our service times are Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7. And we encourage you to come at Evangel North Church. We believe you belong. You'll see that phrase mentioned several times at the church. We just believe that God wants people to be able to come to a body of believers. And we believe that Evangel North will be a great blessing to you. Great ministries for you, for your family. Opportunities for you to activate your gifts, your talents, and your interests. For you to belong with small groups and begin to cultivate your walk with God at Evangel North. Again, we encourage you to come out Sundays and Wednesdays and it'll be a great blessing to you. It's been our honor to bring to you Kingdom Now. It's been Ministry of Evangel North Church and I know that it's been a great blessing to you. We encourage you to share this with people at Facebook, Twitter, your family, your friends. You can view it right here on Channel 21.3 The Light. You can go online WBNA21.com Click on the light and then you can scroll down the ministries, view this program anytime that way. God bless you and thank you for watching Kingdom Now.